Hello everybody. So I'm going to do one more quick video here on um, an unboxing. So this one is the new, well as far as I know it's new, I, I didn't see it on their release date, uh, but it's out and uh, just recently came out as far as I know. The uh, guy at the game store had it and this is the Scorn. Now this is the Praetorian Swordsman and Praetorian um, Keltari or some shit like that. I probably pronounced that wrong and oh well, sorry. Now I didn't pick this up because I can make swordsmen out of this. I picked this up for the staff wielding double sworded guys here that I probably pronounced wrong. Now these like I said, these are new. They have some really great rules that's gonna really help the scorn with the war machine factions that have recently uh, popped up some new models. Um, probably help us out with not all of our infantry getting blasted off the table by the Colossals that are out there in Battle Engines. So these are going to be all small based model uh, bases. These particular models. Now I'm not going to show the Praetorian Swordsman stats. Praetorian Swordsman have been out since Mark 1. Uh, so the bodies are the same. It's just going to be the arms and the weapons they're going to hold. The Praetorian swords Swordsman basically run around with katanas, one in each hand. These guys run around with court stats with daggers on the ends. So I'm going to kind of just show off their card real quick, uh, just for time's sake, as well as, well, like I said, they've been around forever. So here's the card, if it ever decides to focus. I'll give it a second here. Of course not, right? This camera never seems to want to focus on anything. I try to get it to focus on. <laughs> Ah. Okay, there. Oh, well, there we go. Speed six, strength six, mind six, which is pretty good. Rent four. They don't shoot, so it doesn't matter. Defense thirteen, armor fourteen. Uh, sorry, defense thirteen, armor fourteen, command nine. Uh, the two little swords up there means they can combine attack. The uh, double, uh, the double bladed uh, glaive. Um, basically, it's pow ten. Uh, it's power plus strength is a 10 and it has reached just what that big long thing is. Uh, one single attack to the Praetorian Swordsman's too, uh, but that's not too big of a deal. And if you look at the back card, if it decides to focus here, um, there you go. Blade Shield it gives them plus 2 to defense against range attack rolls. They get parry, which means they can disengage uh, combat without suffering free strikes. Uh, it decides to go back in there. You can read that with me. And then the last one is reform. So after the models have moved, I'll just read it. After the models have moved, this unit has completed their actions. Uh, each can advance up to three inches. So that means they can move around after moving and killing something if they attack. Um, they can move three inches. Uh, which is really good, especially with parry, because you can basically engage the enemy. Um, and now the camera doesn't want to focus on me, but while it's focusing on the card, uh, I love the camera. Uh, so yeah, so you, you can basically get in there, charge attack, get to something, um, attack it, you don't kill it, not a big deal, um, and then you move three inches further into their uh, into their back lines, uh, you know, tie up some other models, kind of gunk them up, slow them down a bit and you don't have to worry about yourself getting attacked when you do it just because well they have parry right so that's kind of a nice thing here let me get one of their staff weapons here because there's no reason to show you every single model in here um, yeah, I kind of just find one weapon I'll show you one of the weapons because they're all pretty much going to be the same it's just a matter of how they're going to hold them. I'm not going to show you a swordsman one. So there's really no point in that. They've been around long enough. It's not necessary. 
necessary. Okay. So these are our nice little small sprues here with the little, little arms. Eventually the camera will decide focusing is something it wants to do. There we go. So you can see pretty good detail. Uh, from what I can tell here, not too bad in having to clean up uh, this model or this bit of the model. Really good detail on these uh, plastic pieces they're putting out there. Getting much better at them. Do keep in mind that these are plastic resin hybrids. Um, so cleaning them is a bit different than the hard plastic from GW. If you do decide to buy some product here, press models, I find that you file them down and there might be a little bit of something there. And you just take your hobby knife and kind of just scrape that off real quick. And that solves any problems of it being hard to clean. Because I've heard people like, oh, it's hard to clean those models because of the plastic resin, blah, blah, blah. It's not like GW. And it's like, well, yeah, well it's a different kind of quality product. So, let's see what we got here. Heads and shoulder pads. I'll just show it to you in the bag. There you go. Shoulder pads and heads are in there. Well, at least one of the heads is in there. It's actually right there. There's actually more than one head in there, so you can see them peeking out at you through the shoulder pads. Probably not. That's fine. Not a big deal. I'm just gonna grab two random bodies here. We'll show off these two bodies here. Now these guys aren't too big. Pretty thin, not affinity thin, not too far from affinity thin though. There's lots of little details in scorn armor. Uh, that's one thing about scorn is you're going to be painting a lot of detail to get these models uh, up and going. So if you want an army that you're not going to be sitting there painting a lot of detail on, do not go with Scorn. Uh, I would suggest maybe Trolls, uh, even though they do have a decent amount. It's a pretty icky mold line there, but that shouldn't be too hard to clean off really. Uh, I would suggest Trolls, um, maybe Kador. Kador is not too bad. Oh, but if you want to stay on Horde side, I would go Trolls maybe. Um, Legion's not too bad in um, detail, and Circle's not really that bad. Uh, Scorn's pretty much the worst um, out of all the Horde factions, really, for a lot of detail on them. The other ones, they might have some guys here and there, they're kind of bad, but for the majority of Scorn, it's pretty much, they're all pretty bad, uh, except for the Beast, they're pretty easy to do. Uh, they're not too heavy in detail. Well, most of the beasts aren't too heavy in detail. Um, and any of the uh, Horus factions, uh, War Machine, most of the uh, robots, the Jacks, uh, aren't too heavy in uh, detail. Now, the uh, Gargantuan for Scorn is pretty heavy in detail. The uh, War Machine for, or Battle Engine for Scorn is pretty heavily detailed. Uh, I don't think any of the other factions are too bad in detail. The Archangel, maybe, just because of the pillar thing it's on, but I don't think it's even nearly that bad, uh, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think it's that bad. Uh, so Scorn's kind of the, the ones that are a little bit difficult, but I'm kind of going a little bit of sidetrack here, but that was because this was just an unboxing. So, uh, I do hope that shows you some light on these guys. Uh, I do think these guys are going to be really good. They're pretty much swordsmen, but they're going to have a higher defense against range attacks. Uh, you throw, if you play like Xerxes, you throw a defender's ward on these guys, giving them plus two to defense, plus two to armor. Uh, they're going to go to 15. 
they're going to go to 15, 16, and that's before ranged attacks going on to them. So then somebody tries to shoot them, they're you know they're shooting at defense 17, and that's that's pretty it's pretty steep on uh, 2d6 plus whatever your ranged attack is. So if you have the ability, if you're if you're a rat seven, and they're 17, you need to roll 2d6 and get a 10, you know get a 10 or higher uh, to hit these models. If you have that on, now obviously if I don't have Defender's Ward, you're still needing an eight, and eight is not average dice. So their survivability against range attack is a lot better, and there's um, some basilisks that you can throw in with Scorn. Uh, to also help improve those odds of surviving the uh, ranged attack frenzy that you can get uh, from the armies, especially um, Signar. Signar is really bad about uh, being able to range you off the table. Kador um, is not too bad at it either. And even Menloth has the ability uh, to do it. But uh, this is definitely going to help us and if you look in the newest book. Uh, a lot of our things are kind of geared towards defense against range attacks, which Scorn really needs, uh, as it is more of a melee heavy uh, army uh, compared to the other ones out there. Oh, thank you, Ed, for watching, and have a great day, guys.